Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So today we'll take a look at how to make printed circuit boards at home using a laser printer. I actually already made a video on this, but I've updated a few steps to get a much better result. On this PCB I have some tracks that are 0.4mm and they are very easy uh, to make. I've done 03 as well and uh, below that it gets a little bit tricky but at that point they tend to start uh, peeling off so uh, you need a bit of luck. So obviously you'll need a laser printer and a design uh, to make a circuit board from. The paper that you need is some glossy uh, photo laser paper. I use this uh, Xerox paper and it works great. I have a Canon printer a color laser printer, not that it matters because we will only be doing black and white. So you go ahead and print your design, just uh, on my printer, just normal settings. Just make sure that the traces are totally black and the bare areas are totally white. For the bottom layer, which is usually the signal layer on a single sided circuit board, you just want to print it, uh, because then when you... you see this from the top now, but when you put the circuit board on top, you can see that it gets inverted automatically. If you want to do the top layer, you have to invert your design. Because you can see when we flip it and put it on here, it would otherwise get inverted. So the bottom layer goes straight on and the top layer gets inverted. This one is only a single sided PCB, but you can do the same for double sided, you just need to... Uh, keep track of where you put it. The next step would be to cut a piece of circuit board that is a little bit larger than your design, so you have some margin. You can use uh, bare copper clad that doesn't have any uh, photoresist on it, of course. And if you're lucky, you can find a PCB manufacturer who uh, sells the off cuts very cheaply. And you want to take your uh, circuit board and remove all the burrs on the edges so it's nice and smooth. And then you want to sand it using some 400 grit sandpaper. And you can just go to town with the sandpaper. You need to remove all the reddish brown oxide on the PCB. And when you're done you want it all to look shiny like this. And once you're finished sanding you need to go and wash it with uh, warm water and soap. Some people recommend uh, acetone or alcohol. And I've also used that in the past. But the problem with that is when the solvent evaporates it can still leave a film of oil or dirt on the top of the PCB which would prevent the toner from sticking. If you use regular soap or dishwash and you flood it with warm water that makes sure that you wash away all the dirt and oils. And once you've washed it don't touch it with your fingers because that will also put some oils on it. And also you shouldn't touch the paper once it's printed. So once you've cleaned your board you need to make sure that there's no dust or dirt on it. And the same goes for the PCB design. And you just simply place it on the board. And I usually put a piece of Kapton tape uh, in one end just to make sure that it stays in place. So now we need to apply heat to the circuit board to transfer the toner from the paper to the copper. And you can use pretty much anything for that. Uh, I have an old heat press for printing on cloth and that works very well. You can also just use an iron. If it's a small board like this and you have a nice flat iron you can just apply pressure uh, from the top unless there's sometimes there's uh, holes for steam and stuff like that. If you got that in your iron you have to move it around so that all the areas uh, get pressed and get heated. I like to take uh, two pieces of paper towel and put it on top. And then I heat it for 90 seconds at 145 degrees Celsius or 285 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you just leave it for a few minutes to cool down. And while you do that you can prepare a top of water you can use to dissolve the paper. And once the 
PCB is cooled um, reasonably. Uh, it's about 45 degrees Celsius. You just dump it into some water and that will soak into the paper and dissolve it so that only the toner is left on the cover. And you can see it starts right away. Just leave it for uh, five, ten minutes. You can see once the paper has turned all transparent and there's no solid white spots left, uh, that's when it's ready to start peeling off the paper. You can see there's still some tiny spots around here. You just want to wait till all of those have become transparent as well. So I think that's mostly it. And you just uh, peel off all the paper. And if it's done correctly you don't really have to be that careful. You can just roll it off. Just don't uh, scrape it with your nails you just continue to roll off all of the paper and uh, a good trick could be to use a microfiber cloth to um, polish it or wipe it so that you could get all the pieces of paper out of the holes so I think I'll go and grab a rag or something. So as you can see this really helps to clean it up. And you can apply a decent amount of pressure. It's not that delicate. So that's one of the advantages of using soap and water to wash the PCB instead of a solvent. I found when I use the solvent when I start rubbing on the traces some of them just peel off. It doesn't happen when you have used soap and water and you've cleaned it nicely. You can see there's a little bit of um, mistakes in the traces but they're all good. I think this is because I used a double sided board here. Uh, and. I only plan to make it single sided so I'll just etch away this but I, I didn't have any single sided that would fit the design uh, or they were too big so I didn't want to waste that I have a lot of this stuff usually all the traces look about uh, like how these are looking um, but you can get a few mistakes like this you can see apart from maybe this spot we could uh, even have used 0.3mm traces and it would all be nice and, and great. So now comes the next step of etching it and for that I use a mixture of hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide. It's a very fast process that removes the copper very fast and you don't need to heat it or anything. Of course you need to dispose of the chemicals correctly, they are uh, toxic especially for fish and uh, marine life. The same goes for ferric chloride because the byproducts are actually the same. So no matter what you use you need to dispose of it uh, correctly. The advantage of ferric chloride, the more traditional agent, is that it doesn't really um, have any acid fumes that evaporates and gets into your face. So if you use hydrochloric acid you need to do it in a well ventilated area. So all the paper has been removed and um, I poured out the water and I added a little bit of water in a plastic tub, about two millimeters in the bottom. And then you need to add the hydrochloric acid. About the same amount. And then you need a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. Uh, not very much. Just like one or two centiliters. And then you just uh, put your PCB. And 
and if you want it to go faster you can add a little bit more hydrogen peroxide and a little bit less water. You just don't want it to go so fast that it fizzes and makes bubbles on the surface. With a mixture like this I would say it's going to take 3 to 5 minutes to remove uh, all the copper. But I guess you're not in a hurry anyway. So now you can see the copper is starting to dissolve around the edges. So, so from this point it goes pretty fast. So if you want it to go faster and you want to save your chemicals, it's a good idea to put a ground plane on your PCB so that you're only removing just around the traces. In this case I made a PCB just to test something and I want it to be easily uh, modifiable so I don't want any ground uh, plane in the way of uh, mudding the circuit. So this is purposely uh, made without a ground plane. And it looks like we're about to there. Um, I just need to inspect it to see that all the copper has been removed. And it looks like it, so now you just go and uh, remove your PCB. Uh, use some uh, plastic pliers or get some gloves. And then just pour the uh, chemical into a container. And preferably place it outside because the hydrogen peroxide is going to uh, decompose and that will uh, make a little bit of pressure. So in my case I have the copper on the opposite side so I just need to remove that as well. Perhaps it would have been a good idea to flip it uh, halfway and edge the bottom as well. It goes much faster if you agitate it like this so that the acid sweeps across the surface. So that's why the front side, or actually the bottom side, got uh, etched first. So once you have rinsed it with uh, plenty of water, you uh, can remove the toner by uh, rubbing it with acetone. If you're not going to use the PCB right away, it's a good idea to leave this on, because as soon as you remove it, the copper starts to oxidize and that makes it harder to solder, so it's best to remove the toner uh, right before you uh, plan to use the board. You can easily drill it uh, with the toner on top. You can just put the acetone on a paper towel and then wipe it off, but if you're not as patient you can just flood it. With acetone and that will uh, to solve the toner. You just wait about 30 seconds and then take your paper towel and just uh, wipe off the acetone and just let it flash off and it's ready to use. And make sure that your table can handle acetone. <laughs> you don't want to dissolve your table as well. And here it is, the bare copper. I think it looks pretty nice. You can do a lot of stuff with this toner transfer and it's definitely good enough for most of what I do at home. And really if you need any more than this you can just order some uh, circuit boards from China. They are pretty cheap these days. And they also get the advantage of a through plated hold. That's not that easy to make at home. It can be done but I haven't tried it yet. So now I just need to go and drill it. And for that I just use a Dremel and uh, some HSS uh, drills, about 0.8 1mm, 1.2mm, whatever you need. Just don't buy the carbide bits if you're doing it by hand because they are very brittle and you'll break them before you've made free holes. Um, so HSS is the way to go 
they will wear down much much faster than carbide but you really can't use carbide handheld or at least I can't but if you have a drill press or a PCB drilling machine then uh, go for carbide that makes cleaner holes and they last much much longer And after you have uh, drilled it, you will most likely have some burrs on here, or raised surfaces. You can just take the sandpaper again and uh, give it a quick sanding, and that will remove that and make it much easier to solder. So, that's that, and now it's ready to solder the component. If you want a silk screen on the top side here, you can use the same trick with the laser paper and the heat press, and you can just press the silk screen onto here, and then you just dissolve the paper with water. But you need to be careful when you solder the components, because it's not real silk screen, so it will melt when you hit it with the iron. But it can be good on larger PCBs, so you can see exactly where to put your components. So I think that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give it the thumbs up on YouTube. It helps a lot. Thanks for watching and uh, until next time, see ya.